ladies and gentlemen, I have some epic, epic Sonos hardware hacks that I want to share with you today. Sonos, I absolutely love them. I've got about seven of them in my house. Little cheap, sort of 60, 70 quid ones that I've purchased secondhand off of eBay. I absolutely love them. They deliver a fantastic sound. Now, the problem is, is it's missing a little bit of bass. And the Sonos bass system, the sub, is really expensive. It's about 700 pounds, $700, something along those lines. So what I've done is I drilled a hole in this Sonos, I put a little cable out the back of it, and I've wired it up to this lovely sub bass system here, which sits right next to the sofa, and it scares the poopy out of me and the wife. So let me show you how I've done that. And then the other thing I want to show you is some 3D printed brackets that I've made for these Sonos devices so that you can hang them on the walls, get them up off the shelves and get that good ambient sound coming out in your room. You guys don't have to use one of these. You can just buy an ordinary sub from eBay for about 100, 150 pounds and wire this Son up to a prettier, smaller subsystem. And that will be more than adequate. Anyway, I like my one because it's big and hairy and scary. Oh my goodness, what a difference this sub bass speaker makes. Um, it works, it really works. I'm very pleased with it. To find a way out. You're the one tearing Chester's mill apart. We watched a movie last night with the system on pretty much half volume and I think I hit the brown note, my goodness. Okay, so you are going to need some technical skills in order to be able to do this, people. Uh, so you're going to need to be able to solder, use a screwdriver, all that kind of good stuff. So access to the screws for the base of the Sonos One are located underneath the little rubber sticky pads. And underneath that little rubber sticky pads, there is a plastic little sticky pad. So I'm actually sort of finding this out as I go along here. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit in some instances. I've tried to fast forward through the places of this video that I, I find particularly boring. The rest of it I hope you should find interesting, even if you're just interested to see what's inside a Sonos. Um, but anyway, they're quite well, I tell you what, they are, really are very well constructed. We'll get into that in a few seconds. So let's get rid of all of the, of the plastic stuff, expose those um, bolts there, screws, bolts, whatever, and uh, get the old Torx driver out. This is a Torx driver. I can't remember exactly what size it is, but uh, you are going to need a set of Torx drivers in order to do this. So um, working our way through systematically, we can then pop the base off and the base literally can just get put to one side. We will be drilling a hole in that a little bit later, right by that mains connector. There is a lovely rubber double-sided sticky sealant that is all over this. It's, it is, the construction is magnificent. And that little cage there just slides off, no problem. In fact, I got so intrigued, I just wanted to have a look at this stuff and figure out, you know, is it really as, is it worth paying for? And I must admit that they're, they're really well constructed. It's full on, like a polycarbonate type plastic, solid plastic, the kind of stuff that Peli cases are made out of, if you know what Peli case is. And um, there is some more of that rubber. We're going to have to get a knife to that rubber in a minute to remove it. So um, let's pop the lid off. And don't forget here, we need to do this quite carefully because the lid, the top of the unit, has got a control pad with LED. So that clearly must have some wires connected to it or some switches underneath it. And when we lift the top off, we find, yes, indeed, it's got a little micro sort of Sumitomo style ribbon cable connected to it. Now, this isn't a problem. All you've got to do is lift up that little black plastic clip and that will indeed come off. But uh, that's what's connected to your control panel anyway. And start pointlessly <laughs> taking off these little ears um, and I suddenly found out subsequently that 
there was no need to remove those because that's where the uh, Wi-Fi connectors were. So next part of the process is to remove the rubber from the back of it, that little sticky uh, rubber tape. And actually I found that if you get a knife and you put two very shallow cuts down each side, you can effectively just peel off the little bit of rubber, a little strip of rubber to expose the three screws on either side of this metal chassis here. Um, and that looks like a die cast aluminium a chassis that has been painted. So um, once you've got all of those screws out, get a little flat blade screwdriver and very carefully, again, just push against the rubber seal and you'll hear a little of air and indeed that back chassis will come off. Now don't pull too hard because there's a few connectors in here that we're going to need to sort of reach in and undo. One of which is the mains connector, which is, um, which is the one that we're going to do uh, last, first, last. Okay, this is the speaker connector right here. So um, again, these are relatively easy. They're just little uh, squeezy tabs and they pop out. And then there's the mains connector down there, right next to the switch mode. Press that and it pops out. Now you've also got two uh, Wi-Fi connectors there to those ears and they are glued in. Uh, they're hot glued in. In fact, there's an awful lot of hot glue in here. And you can see that that there is the Wi-Fi card. That's a standard style computer Wi-Fi card. Uh, and those are the Wi-Fi cables. Don't mess with any of that. Leave all of that alone. The, just You can leave this, this, this um, uh, computer unit and power supply unit, the, the main board here, you can leave that all connected on. So, um, so that there is the mains cable. And as you can see, there's the little figure of eight style main socket, which is uh, connected, uh, connected up there. Uh, and that is the switch mode power supply that we're looking at there. Um, and then uh, a little bit more of the switch mode or a lovely little bit of switch modage or switch mode. Although those, they might actually be smoothing capacitors for the speakers. Uh, they might be DC blockers for the speakers. But basically the speaker system looks like it's um, Class D uh, H-Bridge style drive system. Uh, and there's a few inductors there. And uh, perhaps those two fat capacitors uh, that are, are glued together are the thing that, uh, that drives the speakers. Uh, so there's two independent drives for the speakers. Um, there's one tweeter unit and one base unit. And they're driven through that cable which is plugged into the, uh, to the top of the PCB. So um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to solder onto those two base driver speakers. That's all we're interested in pulling out of this Sonos one unit uh, is uh, the base. So what we have got here is a headphone extension cable. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to chop that up and we're going to feed that cable and I was trying to figure out do I want to go through the side of the unit and then I suddenly realized that actually going through the side of the unit would be a nightmare because of that metal screen that goes around it the metal can that goes around it so in the end um, we've gone uh, bottom entry or bottom exit whichever way you want to look at it um, so prepare your cables get a bit of soldering done uh, go ahead and solder onto the top of those two spade connectors that are uh, on the speaker there um, and uh, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the drill out, which is always a little bit scary. So um, before getting the drill out, what I did there is I just put a tiny bit of tape around the Sonos to hold everything in place so I didn't have to screw it all back together. Uh, and then I got the manual drill out. I love these manual drills. They're so cool. Drilly, 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 drilly. So um, when you do this, make sure that you give it a little bit of room, enough to be able to accommodate the bottom cap yes indeed there it is the bottom cap so uh, thankfully I managed to get that exactly spot on it was a bit more sort of um, guesswork rather than uh, better judgment but um, I've missed all of the components in there I've not caused any issues uh, and then ultimately we can poke our cable into the Sonos and that little cable there will be the thing that we use to connect to whatever 
uh, base speaker we decide that we want to connect to this device. So let's pull the um, pull the little bit of tape off, get inside, and then we can solder up that speaker extension lead, that base extension lead. And this shouldn't be too hard. Get your preparation done first, you know. Is it quad P piss poor preparation prevents poor performance? Or is that five of them? I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, there we go. So just go ahead and get that all soldered in place. Uh, and oh, hot glue. Oh my goodness, yeah. So there's enough hot glue in there as it stands already. But this thing, you don't want it vibrating. You don't want that speaker cable rattling around in there and that kind of stuff. And you definitely want to make sure that you block um, off that air hole that you've just created uh, for that speaker cable to go through. So root your speaker cable and make sure you put plenty of the good, wonderful juiciness um, in place. In fact, what I did was I pushed the cable in ever so slightly, glued around the cable and the hole, and then pulled the cable through ever so slightly in order to try to pull or suck through some of that hot glue. Um, and then what we've got to do once we've hot glued the hell out of it all is uh, reassemble. And basically it goes back pretty much the same way that it came apart. So it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm not uh, gonna get into uh, all of the detail of reassembly because you've pulled it apart. So therefore you should know how to put it back together. Um, now there is one little trick here because in the past, oh yeah, clearly don't forget to um, don't forget to, to reconnect your uh, little PCB there, otherwise you'll be taking this thing apart again. Don't forget to sorry, don't forget to reconnect the control PCB, otherwise you'll be taking this thing apart again. Um, now the thing that you will find is that once you've actually screwed it all back together and got everything nailed down, is that protective. Uh, outer casing, that lovely metal shield that goes around the outside of this, uh, won't fit on. Oh no, what are we going to do? It's actually quite easy. Top little trip, top little, there, put my teeth back in. Top trick, just pick that up, rotate it sideways, and actually if you get the, get the little grill, the speaker grill around the right way, you can get that back in place, no problems at all. Boom, look at that. I was dead happy with myself. And I tell you what, I was even happier with myself when I got this wired up to my base cab and everything was working. Uh, the missus and I really enjoyed a couple of good movies last night. So um, yeah, go ahead, get your screwdrivers out, put all of this back together. And then what we've got to do is we've got to set it up. Um, and that isn't too much of a hardship. I'm sure if you already own Sonos equipment, you know the setup process. I did the, the true sound check setup of this speaker not connected to the amplifier, and then I connected it to the amplifier um, and uh, turned uh, the treble right down on this speaker and turned the bass up to about halfway, about normal. Uh, and also turned the speaker right down as well because my bass cab, as you can see, is quite powerful. But you're going to have to tune it however you want to tune it. Uh, but don't forget to do the true sound tuning check because that bit um, will make sure that all of the speakers play in sync. So um, they all run in phase and in sync and they all fire at exactly the same time. But there she is. There she is with a little output on her, and I tell you what, absolutely dead, dead happy. James. Right, so the next part of this mission is uh, to show you some 3D printed brackets that I designed, which give you the ability to be able to hang your Sonos One systems on the wall. Now, the quirky thing about the Sonos One is it only has one little bolt on the back of it. So what I decided to do was create some 3D brackets that took advantage of that little RJ45 port. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's a bit scary because you're, you're shoving something in a port that has electrical connectors. But actually, 
it's only a bit of plastic and it's quite loose fitting and the idea really is that it just stops the speaker from rotating um so i designed these brackets to give you a little bit of play so that you could uh, swivel the bracket ever so slightly and as you can see uh, that's the rj45 location going in place and then just a little bolt now the other thing to note here is these are not standard metric bolts they're american i think so um they're a bit of a funny thread uh, but ultimately this gives you the ability to be able to get those sonos speakers up on the walls out of the way off the shelves and get a decent projection out of them so that they complement your sound bar which is connected to your tv system quite nicely and they offer that lovely surround sound sort of feeling guys and girls thanks ever so much for watching i hope this video was useful for you please make sure you give us a good thumbs up Please make sure you've subscribed because there will be more videos like this in the future. In fact, there's a few other videos like this in the past that you might want to check out as well. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend. Stay safe.